The Rohan Palisade set is undoubtedly a pretty great kit, apart from that bit. But no matter how great the existing kit is, I'd rather have the control that comes from scratch building your own. Picking and choosing the design elements that I really like and dumping the ones that I don't. To kick off this scratch building journey, I textured all of the five millimeter balsa wood rods that I used for the project. This saves time compared to texturing every piece individually. I used seven by three by 22 centimeter blocks of XPF foam for the base of each section, texturing them with a ball of tin foil and making the rock pattern for the dry stone wall with a ballpoint pen. Scoring every rock in the base really was the most time consuming part of this build. If you know a faster way of doing it, drop it down in the comments. Each wall section had to be sealed with homemade Mod Podge before I could move to the next step as I wanted to use super glue for the majority of the build process. I used some one mil chipboard for the base and stuck it down with some no more nails. A mini mic box really is a must have little tool for when you're scratch building with balsa and a tiny amount of blue tack to hold the bits down on your cutting mat as you glue it will stop your bits from being totally wonky. I marked 7.3 centimeters on the long support beams to keep the spacing even. By being precise about your measurements, all your balsa wood beams should work really nicely and stick together and should cut down on those nasty little surprises during the build process. I wanted to replicate this design from the walls of Edoras as I thought they looked pretty cool. I marked out one and 1.5 centimeters from the very top of the palisade and marked out a good place to copy the angles. Then it was just a case of snipping off the excess. I recommend buying your coffee stirring sticks in bulk off of Amazon rather than asking your partner to discreetly not steal any when she goes to a coffee shop. I decided to make the walkways out of one millimeter balsa, primarily because I was feeling a little bit lazy at this point. I marked out the planks and textured them with my steel wire brush before gluing them down. I sealed all of the wood sections down with homemade Mod Podge as balsa can get a little bit fluffy when you texture it with a steel wire brush. After building another three wall sections, I was ready to not spend three days wondering how I was going to build the gatehouse. I went back to my blocks of XPF foam. This time, I only needed short sections to allow the gate to open and close, which was a small mercy because I really didn't want to spend too much time making lots of dry stone wall texture. I measured out and cut the balsa wood strips I needed for the gatehouse. This time I took extra care in lining up the pieces almost perfectly against my cutting mat. If any of the angles were off by just a couple of millimeters, it would mean that the gate wouldn't open and close properly, which would defeat the whole purpose of the gatehouse. Some of the blue tack stuck down into the wood texture, so I rolled up a little ball of blue tack just to scoop it all out of the excesses. I used the base to painstakingly line up the joins before checking to see if all of the wood beams would fit. They needed a little bit of trimming before I could go to the next step. I lined up the gatehouse with one of the wall sections, not realizing not all of the super glue had dried. I stuck on the beams for the walkways and added a few extra supports around the gate. I made the gate out of two pieces of one millimeter balsa wood. I used an old base to draw out the perfect circle. I was extremely careful with cutting this out as curves in balsa wood have a tendency to split. If you're enjoying the video so far, why don't you give us a like or have a think about supporting the channel on Patreon. I wanted to steal some design cues from the gate of Helm's Deep rather than recreate the gate from the existing plastic kit. I drew out a grid on some cardstock using a spare 5mm bit of balsa wood and my steel ruler. I used the boxes to create diamond patterns and cut them into long sections. I marked the sections against the doors and super glued them on. I double layered the patterns on the bottom and decided to invert the pattern at the top. I added some rivet details with, you guessed it, nail art beads. If I don't use this on every single scratch build I do, I will be shook. 
I've got these brass hinges for dull houses off of eBay, as I thought using these would be a lot easier than trying to scratch build my own hinges. After lining them up and gluing the hinges in, I trimmed the brass pins that came with the set, as they were 5mm long and I didn't want them to punch through the detailing on the door. Now we have a gate that's ready to take on those orc battering rams. I finished up all the walls on the gatehouse, textured them up and then sealed them down with some homemade Mod Podge before texturing them with AK Interactive Grand Texture, a base coat with a lot with a whole bunch of Molotail Black and then highlighted them all with white ink. To create a super realistic look for the wood panels, I used watered down washes of Gulliman Flesh, Skeleton Horned, Plague Bearer Flesh, Wildwood and Snake Bite Leather. Mixing all these tones together created a wonderful sun bleached and aged effect. For the rock bases, I actually used less of the tones than are on screen at the moment. In the end, I only used Gulliman Flesh, Militarium Green and Dark Grey. To help marry all of these tones together and give it a grimy, lived-in aesthetic, I slapped on a hefty coat of homemade black wash, followed by a dry brush of buff tone with my Artist Opus dry brushes. I then dry brushed on a purple grey colour on all of the stonework, followed by a nice white dry brush in all of the highlights. I used some cheap brown craft paint to base colour all of the soil, and this is where things went a little bit wrong. I wanted to recreate the weathering pigment effect that I used on my previous build, but it didn't work out that well. The glue ended up sticking underneath the door and would have stuck the door down, so I had to clean all of this off with a baby wipe and some kitchen roll. Instead, I decided to mix the withering pigments with some AK Interactive Rough Ground Texture. And this actually worked pretty nicely because it provided lots of different tones of browns for the soil textures. There we have it everyone, realistic wooden walls for your war games. Keeping all of the elements that we liked about the existing Games Workshop plastic kit and dumping the ones that we weren't so mad about. If you want to see how to scratch build some Tigral Door Terrain next, click on the video up here. I really hope you enjoyed this video and we will catch you on the next one.